Okay, right now I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Bruce Clark. Bruce is the general manager at AI Tech Instruments, LLC. Bruce has spent 30 years involved in the engineering, manufacture, and application of reliable, cost-effective speed sensor and tachometer products that protect, monitor, and control rotating equipment used in very demanding mill arrow, petrochemical, rail, and industrial markets. Previously, Bruce managed engineering activities at AI Tech and is currently the general manager leading a group of exceptional seasoned professionals. So, Bruce, welcome to today's event. Thanks for being here. And with that, I'm going to pass things over to you to get us started. So, Bruce, go right ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Bruce Clark, general manager of AI Tech. I'd like to welcome you to the Hazardous Locations Where to Start webinar. Hazardous locations form a large part of the infrastructure that supplies fuel, chemistries, and food that make up our daily lives. Refineries, petrochemical plants, and grain silos are just a few locations where flammable, explosive atmospheres are present during normal operation or as a result of a system failure. AI Tech produces speed sensing equipment specifically designed and third-party listed for safe operation in these environments. Before we begin, it's important for the audience to understand the following. Hazardous location environments involving explosive atmospheres are complex and require a high level of knowledge to ensure safety. AI Tech is very familiar with what it takes to design, list, and build speed sensing equipment for HasLock applications. It is up to the customer, however, to understand and take responsibility for how the product integrates into their safety system and comply with all statutory and regulatory requirements. So you might be wondering what is speed sensing and how does it play a role in hazardous locations? The two major components we supply are speed sensors and tachometers. Speed sensors bridge the gap between the mechanical and electrical world. They magnetically sense the spinning target and produce an electrical signal whose frequency is proportional to the speed of the target. Tachometers are configurable instruments that provide measuring, monitoring, and control to critical equipment by directly reading speed sensor signals and converting those signals into units and functions that are relevant to the user, such as revolutions per minute or gallons per minute. Conveyors, turbines, compressors, flow meters, blowers, pumps, grain elevators, secondary over speed protection systems, they all have rotating shafts that produce motion in the mechanical system and require some level of electronic monitoring and control. In hazardous environments, designs must not only provide proper sensing function, but also operate in such a way as to be safe relative to the hazards they will encounter. Hazards, environments, and equipment can vary a great deal. No single protection strategy would fit all of the variations. However, the universal point is to limit exposure of electrical or thermal energy to the hazardous environment. Multiple protection strategies have been developed to provide multiple paths to the same goal. Protection strategies are based on principles such as not allowing arcs, sparks, and hot surfaces, containing an explosion, also known as explosion proof, limiting energy of sparks and surface temperature, also known as intrinsic safety, as well as keeping out flammable gases. You can see that not all listing agencies have adopted all of the protection principles. Safety level is listed at the bottom, and it is not in itself a HASLOC protection strategy. I placed it here to get everyone thinking about how important it is for a device to function well and at many levels. We'll cover still more in, in much more detail at the end of this presentation. North America, Europe, and the rest of the world has developed language for describing hazardous areas. Of course, there are some differences and some similarities. 
North America uses class group division in T code, while Europe and the rest of the world use equipment group, group, zone, and T code. Diving into North America a little more deeply, class describes a physical property of the hazard. Is it a gas, vapor, or dust, or fibers? Group expands on the class by describing the actual gas or dust hazard. Is it acetylene or metal dust? Division describes the probability the hazard will exist in the classified area. And temperature class, that tells us the maximum allowable surface temperature. ATEX, or IEC, takes a slightly different approach. The most significant difference is equipment group or apparatus group describes the typical type of equipment and hazardous compounds likely to be found together. Group aligns well with North American group. Zone aligns well with division, but also adds basic hazard properties such as gas or dust, much like North American class. Temperature class is the same as North America. I'll focus more detail on this terminology in the coming slides. For clarification, I may use the terms ATEX, ICEX, and Europe interchangeably throughout this presentation to describe essentially the same thing. Equipment grouping in class is very comparable between North America and ATEX, IECEX systems. Both use the same hazardous materials. They simply use different nomenclature to specify them. For example, ATEX, or IECEX, lists acetylene as group 2C. 2 indicates the hazard is gaseous, and C indicates acetylene. Also noteworthy is that hydrogen, H2, is also under 2C, making it similar to North American class 1 groups A and B. North America designates acetylene as class 1 group A. Hydrogen is group B. In either system, the gases listed are representative of a larger group of gases. Both systems also designate for things like flammable lint, conductive and non-conductive dusts. Europe and North America both have methods to describe the probability that a hazard will exist in an area. Based on the probability, standards and methods of protection may vary. Europe uses zones while North America uses divisions. The zone zero or division one both indicate the hazard will be present continuously under normal operating conditions. North American division two indicates only abnormal conditions produce a hazard. Zones subdivide this concept where zone one, the hazard is likely to occur, and that's a distinction from continuously present. Zone 2 says the hazard is unlikely to occur or for short periods of time. Zone also describes the basic properties of the hazard, such as if it is a gas or dust. Zone 2-0 carries the same probability as zero, but applies to combustible dust. Now, I like this graphic. It gives a good intuitive representation of zones and divisions and where they lie. The bottom line, if the system and components in that system are not designed, listed, and used properly, bad things can happen. Methods of protection are utilized by European standards. There's a lot of information on this chart and that can be used for reference later. For the purpose of this presentation, it is important to understand there are distinct methods to be used in the design and manufacture of a device to be listed. Not all methods can be used in all locations, groups, or zones. There are methods used to be effectively accomplish any of the protection principles discussed earlier in the presentation. As an example, intrinsic safety, low case I, would be used to accomplish limiting the energy of sparks and surface temperature and would be appropriate for zone zero and zone one. I find temperature code is quite often misunderstood. You've heard a lot of dialogue about limiting electrical and thermal energy. If that is the case, it is imperative to quantify those sources of energy so that we'll know if the system will exceed the auto ignition temperature of the hazardous environment 
we must operate within. Electrical energy can, in part, be the energy of a spark and quantified by the units of milli or microjoules. Electrical energy is also one of the sources of thermal energy, along with other byproducts of operation, such as friction. It is important to understand temperature code is the sum of the maximum ambient operating temperature of the hazardous area and the maximum temperature rise that will be created as a result of operation of that device. Temperature code is not related to the rated operating temperature of the device. Just because our sensor can operate at 200 degrees C does not mean its surface temperature will reach 200 degrees C. In fact, it is possible the same sensor may be appropriate for as low as T5 or T6 areas. Another source of confusion is marking. ICEX marking to the right of the example shows us the example device is rated as explosion proof. Method of protection is flame proof as designated by the lowercase d. Gas group is 2C for hydrogen and acetylene. Temperature class is T4 for less than 135C. And equipment protection level is GB, meaning it is good for zone 1. ATEX uses the same marking as ICX but adds some additional information. The CE mark that indicates the device conforms to EU directives. EX in the hexagon indicating explosion proof rating. Equipment group is two for applications other than mining. Equipment category two indicates rating for zone one and G defines the environment as gas. My advice, work closely with your certification house and notified body. AI Tech offers a number of solutions, both for the primary goal of speed sensing as well as the safety aspect of hazardous locations. The following series of slides shows examples grouped by basic protection strategies. The current slide shows a passive speed sensing device rated as North American Explosion Proof under ULCSA and ETL. Under the ULCSA listing, the sensor is capable of Class 1 and to Division I areas for all gas and dust groups. The sensor is also rated to be used as part of a SIL-3 functional safety system. We'll talk more about SIL at the end of this presentation. Here is a passive speed sensing device with intrinsic safety as its protection strategy and listed by FM for North America as well as ATEX and IECEX. Please note that FM, IECEX, and ATEX require use of an energy limiting barrier to accomplish the respective listing. This sensor is also SIL-3 capable. This last product slide shows a group of mixed listings through ATEX and IECEX that include protection through a combination of strategies such as flame proof, encapsulation, and non-sparking. These sensors are also SIL-3 capable. In general, explosion-proof sensors are characterized by a number of features. UL recognized leads, cables, and wires. Housing material, thickness, and encapsulation designed to contain rated explosive pressures. Internal clearances are maintained between critical electrical components and ground, and a ground bonding wire. Intrinsically safe sensors also have a number of characterizing features. Agency recognized cable designed to prevent generation of arcs and sparks specific to zone and protection concept. Low energy or energy limited output and they may require use of energy limiting barriers. ATEX also produces a tachometer product that can be used in hazardous environments. The tachometer itself is not listed. Instead, it is mounted into a listed enclosure to create HazLock capability. TACTROL has a display and a corresponding window in the listed box, while TACPAC does not have a display and therefore no window. Regardless of the type of tachometer, they can be used in a number of UL, CSA, and ATEX listed areas.
safety integrity level is all part of functional safety design and not in itself a protection strategy. Relative to keeping a sensor from being a source of ignition or allowing an ignition to propagate, a dead speed sensor may actually be safer than one that it is working. Unless, of course, that sensor is controlling a process involving the handling of a hazardous material and that a failure of that system might be a hazardous condition. SIL is listed here to show that AI tech sensors are not only listed as safe or hazardous locations, but also found to be statistically unlikely to fail in operation. It is a powerful combination and offers the maximum in safety and reliability. There are four basic SIL levels. Four is the highest level of safety and would be used in applications such as found in nuclear power plants. AI tech speed sensors are capable of supporting a SIL level three that might be present at petrochemical plants and refineries. The individual device does not carry a SIL level. Instead, a reliability number is assigned and used in the calculation for an entire system. SIL 3 is associated with a safety level of 99.9 to 99.99%. In other words, the probability of failure on demand, or the PFD number, is low, 0.01% to 0.1%. Or stated another way, risk is reduced 1,000 to 10,000 times over that of a non-SIL rated device. Well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about hazardous locations. For more information about AI Tech, its history, products, and technologies, visit our website at www.aitechinstruments.com. We're also on YouTube. Search for the AI Tech channel. Please call us directly with any inquiries. We love to get involved as soon as possible in any new application. We are here to help. Thanks again for your interest in AI Tech.